let's take a look back to Kamara, what we saw over the weekend. Been a few moving parts. All the way to Justin Gaethje, who's very good friends and teammates with Kamara Usman, but he, all the way down to Justin Gaethje taking issue with the way Michael Bisping called that fight. Now, the tie-in or the conflict there, just i am give you guys the Cliff Notes version, is Michael Bisping being the last, not to mention the first ever, British champion, and then comes Leon. But now Leon's got to go out and defend it. So, Justin Gaethje thought that, that, that Bisping showed some favoritism to his own country. But fine, he's a human being. He, he, he might have. I, I, I don't care to have that battle with you. What I'm suggesting for you is this was a big moment in our history that does look like is behind us. I, I'm not hearing any rumblings, any chatter. I'm not calling, hearing anybody, including Kamar Usman, saying, let's get Kamar versus Leon again, that it was controversial that home field swayed it, that he had announcers that were working against him, right? But just for fairness, every direction you go, it looks as though we have a piece of settled business. Well, that in and of itself is important to know. Two weeks ago, we had Joe Rogan suggest to the world that Rachmanov could be taking on the winner. Four days ago, at the weigh-in, we have... Colby Covington coming through the curtain. And as soon as this contest was over, it looks as though Colby will be taking on a winner. If Colby's to take on the winner, it brings you back to what do we do with Rachmanov, but it sounds as though possibly we've solved that. We put Rachmanov in there with Blahal. Now, the one thing about suggesting Blahal Mohammed is you're going to have 50% of the fight done. I'll do it for him. I'll, I'll tell you right now. He accepts. I'll save you that part of your day. You got 50. You want Blahal Muhammad? You got Blahal Muhammad. Well, let me tell you who he's going to take on. I, I don't need to hear. If you want Blahal, you've got Blahal. It sounds like you want to do it with Rachmanov. That would need, in my opinion, to be clarified and specified as a number one contenders match. That's the only right thing to do. And in the wake of all of this, as you're making your guesses, right, as you're hedging your bet, when you're hedging your bet in this, in this thing, what we do over here when we just speculate, you're looking at the other options. So it looks like we got Bull Hall and we swept over here. It looks like we swept Rachmanov. So, of course, you ask the million-dollar question, what do we do with Chamayev? Also, over the weekend, it appears that Chamayev has clearly moved up to 185 pounds. Dana White spoke on this. Do you want to know what my evidence is? My evidence is Dana. He said that Jemayev's next fight, but see, this is how he worded it. This is the problem with me just telling you something, right? Everything, there's a little interpretation. There's a little bit of room. When you say things like this, which is what Dana said when he said, we're booking his next fight at middleweight. We're booking his next fight at middleweight is not quite the same as he's left 170 and he is now a middleweight. It should be, and it appears to me as such, and Dana even said, and it should be against the top three guy. Okay, massive clue. I suppose what I should do is go find the rankings page and look at who one, two, and three are. Well, before I do that, you guys know I don't love the rankings, but before I do that, off the top of my head, I know Pierre is the champ. I know Adesanya lapped the division. He's got to be number two. And I know Robert Whitaker is a tremendous pain in the ass. So I'm going to assume that I just found the three guys. If I did, and Dana's statement is to be literal, I also know that Izzy and Pierre are fighting, which would leave me a Robert Whitaker, which means it's Shemaya versus Robert Whitaker, but I'm not confident in telling you that. Why? Because Chemayev has started heat in every single direction except that one. In fact, he was asked about Whitaker. And Chemayev, who loves to burn the building down, said something nice about Whitaker. He went further and said, I would even like to train with Whitaker, of which the media went to Whitaker, told him what Chemayev said. Whitaker responded and said, that'd be great, mate. I'd like to train with him too. So why are we putting those guys together? Is that for sure what we're going to do? Why are we doing that? Are, are we doing that because we got to do something before we give Chemayev a title shot? Is that what we're doing? 
I can play by those rules, but is that what we're doing? Where is Paulo Costa? In terms of with the stand in the company and his contract. Where we left off, Paulo wanted a new one. He was not thrilled. But that was a period of time ago. I think that whatever that answer was, I think it's worked itself out. There's been enough time to, and we know about the organic situation between Paulo Costa and Chemayev. We know about that. So it would seem as though, even though Paulo's not ranked three, and I'm not looking at the ranking guys, this is top of my head, but I, I would imagine I've got it right. It's got to go Pierre Adesanya. It's got to go Whitaker. It's got to go Paulo Costa. I, I got to think that I'm right. But Dana said top three, top three. That's a figure of speech, right? Number four is top three, isn't it? Number six is top three. Like, no, like, the, the, top three. That top guy, it doesn't mean one, two, or three, does it? Does it have to? Do we have to put Shemaya and Whitaker, the two guys that have made it pretty clear they don't want to, they actually like each other? Do we have to do that? Why? It's a funny thing in many ways. Now, Leon, to go back to 70, made a very interesting statement. Made a very interesting statement because I don't think he's bluffing. I don't think he's kidding. It made a lot of sense. He said he didn't want to fight Colby. To call Leon, to go to the most basic and simple, what do we always do in fighting? Every single time, 100%. What do we do when a guy doesn't want to fight a guy? He's scared. We call him scared. Same as we did in third grade on the playground. It never changes, and we call the guy scared. Do, do, do you realize what a fool you would look like if you call Leon scared? I mean, you, you, you should be ashamed of yourself if you say those words. You call Leon a lot of things. I just, I just don't believe you can call him that. Not in good conscience. But he did say, Kobe's been out for a year. He said, I just don't think that a guy that's been out for a year can come into a world title fight. And Leon, but to see, now I'm listening. Now I'm going, okay, this isn't a champion that's doing what he should do, which was get all the really hard guys out of the way and go get the easiest fight he can. That's not what he's doing. This is a competitor. This is a sportsman who believes there's a certain way things should be done. And he used himself as an example. He said, I had to fight 11 guys constantly through a pandemic where my country shut airports that I had to go through these, try to do all of these things just to get this opportunity. And you're telling me this guy can sit out for a year and slide in. It's not the world's worst point. I hear what he's saying. Now, I don't know that Leon, if we're just going real honorable here, we're going real fair. We're, 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 we got a jury and we're trying to use facts, which is something that we don't do a lot of that in sport. But let's say that's what we're doing. I'm not sure that Leon has all the information. I'm not sure that Leon understands how many guys turned down Colby. I'm not sure that Leon understands what it would be like to be Colby, to be the true number one contender, but you can't fight for the title. I mean, Leon's talking about what he had to do to get back to Kamara Usman. I'm not sure he's ever stood back and looked at Colby and seen what Colby was going to have to do to get back to Kamara Usman, of which was never going to happen. Kamara kept that belt. Colby was not going to become an opponent. Though he was going to have to do the training camps, he was going to have to cut the weight, he was going to have to do the media, he was going to have to get there and fight the fights, he was going to pick up a check that isn't the one he wanted because of the opportunity that he wanted wasn't there. I think if you looked at that from that perspective, I think that Leon might be like, eh, okay, I, I see what's happening now. This wasn't Colby took his ball and went home. Colby refused to play. They didn't have anybody for him to play with. And anybody for him to play against. And we don't get that information. We don't get to know what's happening behind the scenes, except in a rare case, and this happens to be one, where Dana came out and said, we offered Colby three opponents, and Colby said yes to all three. It was the opponent we couldn't get to the table. I think when Leon starts to consider those things, when he starts to take a real good look, see, Jemayev's gone. When he takes a real good look, but he sees that Blahal and Rachmanov got a date. I think, I think when he can step back just a little bit and observe this, he'll see that Colby Covington's the right thing to do.